Hello and welcome to everyone. Today we venture into the arcane world of global markets, where stories worthy of the greatest adventure novels lurk. Imagine two brothers, endowed with immense fortunes and boundless audacity, embarking on a game of financial chess on a planetary scale. The goal? Nothing less than domination of the money market. In this context, the Hunt brothers quickly became the protagonists of a story the world will not forget. With every strategic move they made on this global chessboard, millions of people held their breath, curious to see the outcome of this daring endeavor. However, if the markets have taught us one thing, it is that they are unpredictable, even for the most prepared and influential. A lesson the Hunt brothers learned in a way they never anticipated. So, you want to know more? Hold on tight, because we're about to dive into a saga that has shaken the very foundations of global finance. And if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss our upcoming video. 1973 was a tumultuous time. The first oil shock, wars and revolutions were breaking out, but at the same time, behind the scenes in the economic world, two Texan brothers, Nelson Bunker and William Herbert, were planning a major coup that would turn the silver market upside down. To understand the scale of their audacious attempt, we must first look at the development of silver before their intervention. For centuries, silver had been a prized currency of exchange, its value reflecting its scarcity and its demand for the manufacture of objects. However, as modern monetary systems evolved, gold began to eclipse silver as a store of value. But in the 20th century, silver found new uses in photography, electronics and medicine. Its market expanded, influenced by industrial demand rather than pure speculation. These changes in the silver market coincided with the economic upheavals of the 1970s. The collapse of the gold-based monetary system in 1971 led to rising inflation, prompting investors to seek safe havens for their capital. Silver, with its various applications, quickly became that alternative. This increase in demand was not only the result of its intrinsic qualities, but also of government policies at the time. Low interest rates, coupled with restrictions on the purchase of gold, made silver even more attractive. In this fertile environment, the Hunt brothers, from an oil-rich Texan family, saw an opportunity. These billionaires are driven by a combination of fear of inflation, distrust of paper money and an incredible investment strategy, have embarked on an unprecedented attempt to accumulate and control the global money market. But who were these Hunt brothers really? To fully understand the scale of their ambition, it is essential to trace their origins and upbringing. Nelson Bunker and William Herbert were the sons of Haroldson Lafayette, one of the wealthiest and most controversial men in American history. Haroldson had amassed his fortune in the oil fields of East Texas in the 1930s, giving his children a solid financial base and a privileged education. They were educated in the best schools and quickly learned the ropes of the business world. Bunker, the eldest, had a penchant for oil exploration, while Herbert was more interested in commercial operations. Together, they ran businesses around the world, from Libya to Australia, demonstrating an exceptional talent for spotting lucrative opportunities where others failed to see them. But their ambition didn't stop with oil. From an early age, they had a fascination with precious metals, a passion inherited from their father. This led them to invest in silver mines in Australia and South America, laying the foundations for their future success in the silver market. So, faced with the turbulence and economic uncertainties of the 1970s, the Hunt brothers, armed with their education, experience and sharp business instincts, decided to act. They saw in the fluctuating markets and the devaluation of fiat currencies a unique opportunity to capitalize on their long-standing interest in precious metals, particularly silver. For them, silver represented not only a strategic investment, but also a solid store of value at a time when few things seemed secure. Driven by a desire to protect their wealth and maximize their influence in the market, they were ready to take a bold step that would make them part of the history of the global silver market. Their initial strategy was simple, but its audacity was unprecedented. While others were moving towards more traditional investments, the Hunt's approach was radically atypical. They wanted to own silver, not through contracts, papers or promises, but the metal itself, tangible and shiny. But it wasn't a quest for a few ingots or a handful of coins. They were aiming high, the figures speak for themselves, while the world's stock of silver was estimated at 500 million ounces, or just over 15,000 tons, in just a few months, they had amassed 55 million ounces, valued at 100 million dollars. 
This massive acquisition represented more than 10% of the world's available stock. So how could such an acquisition go unnoticed? Discretion was essential. Rather than buying openly, the brothers used a series of intermediaries, shell companies and hidden transactions. This helped to cover their tracks and conceal the true scale of their accumulation. By operating behind the scenes, they managed to escape the market's radar for a time, while building one of the world's largest private cash reserves. But Nelson Bunker and William Herbert's ambitions did not end with physical possession of silver. On the international stock markets, silver futures were actively traded. These financial instruments, for those unfamiliar with them, allow an investor to commit to buying or selling silver at a set price on a specified future date. The Hunt brothers, with their flair for opportunity, were quick to grasp the potential of this market mechanism. By acquiring a massive volume of futures contracts, not only were they placing a bold bet on rising silver prices, but they were also ensuring that when the contracts expired, they would be delivered even more physical silver. The combination of these two strategies, the direct acquisition of physical silver and the taking of large positions in futures contracts, was unprecedented. To put this in perspective, even the wealthiest investors of this period were generally limited to stakes in mining companies or other financial instruments indirectly linked to silver. The Hunt brothers, however, with their innovative approach and colossal financial power, chose to attack the silver market at its roots. And their strategy quickly paid off. Under the effect of their continuous and massive purchases, the price of silver began to rise. Initially, the rise was modest, almost imperceptible. But as their accumulation continued, the rise accelerated. Each new move by the Hunt brothers reinforced the idea that silver was becoming increasingly scarce, creating a bullish ripple effect. And, as is often the case in these situations, rising prices attracted other players to the market. New investors, seduced by soaring prices and the lure of profit, rushed to buy silver, amplifying demand and pushing prices even higher. However, behind the veil of these acquisitions lay a much more complex network. Nelson Bunker and William Herbert were not acting alone. In fact, they had surrounded themselves with a circle of trusted partners and collaborators. Bankers, precious metals traders and strategic investors aligned themselves, directly or indirectly, with the brothers' ambitions. These collaborators, whether motivated by a shared vision, personal loyalty or simply the lure of profit, played an essential role in orchestrating this strategy. The support of these partners enabled the Hunt brothers to amplify their influence, secure financing for their massive purchases, and obtain crucial information that guided their decisions. Thanks to this synergy, by 1979 their company had acquired more than 150 million ounces of precious metal, taking their combined stock to 200 million ounces. Against this backdrop, Silver prices soared from barely $5 an ounce at the start of 1979 to $54 12 months later. The result? The Hunt brothers, who hold almost half the world's silver stocks, have seen the virtual fortune soar to hundreds of billions of dollars. But the Hunt brothers' triumph was short-lived. The speed with which they had risen to power raised alarms among regulators and commodity exchanges. In response to their massive accumulation, the rules of the game began to change. The exchanges, Concerned about potential market manipulation, introduced restrictions on buying silver on margin, making it more difficult to acquire large quantities of silver with borrowed funds. These new rules triggered a cascade of unfortunate events for Nelson Bunker and William Herbert. Without the ability to buy on margin, they were forced to liquidate some of their positions to cover their margins, causing silver prices to plummet. So what was once a meteoric rise quickly became a precipitous fall. In just a few months, the price of silver collapsed, falling back to more conventional levels. This collapse highlighted the vulnerability of the Hunt brothers' strategy, which was heavily based on debt. The growing disparity between the value of their money and their debts led to monumental losses. Once considered the undisputed masters of finance, they suddenly found themselves in financial peril. Finally, in 1988, they could not escape the inevitable and were declared personally bankrupt. But the consequences didn't stop there. In addition to their financial setbacks, the brothers also faced legal consequences. Accused of conspiring to manipulate the market, they found themselves in the crosshairs of the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission. In 1989, the commission fined Nelson Bunker $10 million and banned him from trading commodities for his attempts to dominate the silver market. 
he was also forced to pay several million dollars more to the U.S. tax authorities to settle other disputes. Of course, his brother William Herbert, although less in the media spotlight in this case, also suffered significant financial and legal consequences in connection with the joint activities in the precious metals market. Nevertheless, while their fortunes were severely damaged by the sudden collapse of their empire, they were not entirely wiped out. In fact, the Hunt family still holds many assets in the oil sector. But the brothers' days of greatness and influence on world markets are over. By playing with money too much, they ended up getting burned.